when you think about like what your life, like the highlights of your life, what are some highlights of your life that you think you'll remember or that you already remember? What's that? So this is what a lot of times we think that our life is going to be like, like the highlights of our life. So party or first car, Disneyland, grad night, riding a bike, um, whatever it is, even if it's like traveling, you know, maybe to Paris for the first time or whatever. And this is an idea I was working out yesterday and I'm still kind of working it out. Um, so you think of our life as kind of like, you know, we're just kind of going about life and all of a sudden there's a party. And that's like this peak. And this is the t- thing that we'll look at and we'll say, oh, I'm going to remember this. This is a, a great thing that happens. And then, of course, there's something in your life that, like, drops down. You know, some kind of tragedy or whatever. But then you get that first car. And maybe you're back to normal. Then Disneyland. Then, I don't know, car accident on the way back from Disneyland or something. Um, grad night. But then you're on the bus with me and you fall asleep on the way home. So <laughs> something terrible happens to you because it will. Um, <laughs> Riding a bike, whatever, back down Paris. It looks like a lifeline, doesn't it? Like when you're in the hospital. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it looks like life. So you think about the kinds of things that, that are down here, these tragedies that we, that we encounter. And this is why people will say about life, like life is like strikes and gutters. It's highs and lows. It's peaks and valleys. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is, I mean, how often do you do this? And how many of these do you have? And how often do you go there? And there and you do, do, do this and travel there. Most of your life is not really those peaks and, and valleys. We, we misunderstand it when we, when we say that that's what it is. Most of your life actually is happening just in that space right there. And that's what he's referring to as the monotonous. You know, the mon- we might use the word mundane. Mundane just means like the day-to-day activities. This is like, I don't know, Going to coming you know, uh, on your drive to school, or on your drive to work, or sitting at home and watching television, or talking with your friends—all of those things are, are here. And this is where, like, you know, 99.9% of your life actually resides. And some of them are a bit higher, and they're closer to this range up here. Sometimes they're a little bit lower, and we run the risk of, of dropping them down there. But the more of these things that you can kind of identify at the time as being significant and important, I think what you're going to find is the more of those things you can kind of lift up into that upper stratosphere of like, you know, maybe not a first car, maybe not grad night or Disneyland, but um, I was telling my, my classes a story yesterday about, um, you know, every 4th of July, Kimmel has that, that, that 4th of July thing down there, yeah. that fireworks, yeah. yeah. And, um, the, the past few years, well, I guess, I, well, actually, I guess the first time was about three years ago. The, the gym where I trained, we did like an exhibition where you were out there and you could see like people doing jujitsu and then like that kids doing Muay Thai and, and I was emceeing it. So I had the microphone and I was the one who was like saying, hey, here's who we are, here's what we're doing. And the whole time I'm, I'm narrating what's going on. So before we started, we were like backstage and there was, uh, I guess like probably a dozen of us or so from my gym. And I had the mic and kind of had it behind, and we're waiting for the time to go on. And they're playing music, and that song, um, Santa Dia, from Sublime. Oh yes. Yeah. You guys know? Oh, you guys know yeah. this? I ain't got no crystal ball. I had a million dollars, but I, I spent it all <laughs> if I could find that honey. And that Sancho that she's found, I pop a cap in Sancho, and I slap her. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. And there's about a dozen of us circled up there, and I, I started singing it. And then just like that, more people started singing it. And by the end, it was all of us in the group, like in the circle, singing this song. And I remember thinking at the time, I'm going to remember this. And I wonder how many of you will remember that just now. Like there was the class that you sang Santa Dia, you know? because then that means it wasn't just you know October eighth on, on a Tuesday. That means that you managed to take one little small event and raise it up into something memorable. And then something else today. I don't know. Maybe you're gonna have a you're gonna hear a joke from somebody, and it's gonna change the day just a little bit. Maybe it'll bring it up just a little bit, not entirely up in that upper region, you know. 
this is the thing about, about life, that we can make it more meaningful and more enjoyable and more memorable, more worthwhile. If we can just kind of elevate these little mundane things up just a little bit. Because maybe you can't take something that happens down here and make it the greatest event of your life. But maybe that thing that if you bring up just a little bit, maybe that can end up leading to the greatest moment of your life. In other words, it puts you in a position where you're in the right place at the right time. At the very least, you have more of a memorable life. You know? um, I was giving it, did you guys, anybody play like online games? Like massive, the, the, the online, nobody? Yeah. How, many, how many of you guys play games online? Okay. So if, if you've ever gotten to the end of a game and you've thought back to how much you've done in that game, yeah. like I used to play Fallout games, and sometimes, and so if you're familiar with Fallout, you're familiar with it, it's this big, it's a huge game. You can spend like dozens and dozens and dozens and hundreds of hours actually playing this game. And then eventually the game ends, you've done everything, and you can still kind of walk around the wasteland, and you can see a building, and you're like, maybe I've never seen that, oh no, I did see that building like six months ago when I was playing. And then you can start to remember all of the things that happened six months ago when you were playing, and then you can start to remember, holy crap, I have spent a lot of time in this game, and I've done a lot of stuff. You know, it's just little reminders, little reminders, little reminders. And maybe that's what this can be. Little reminders of all the interesting things that you've done in your life. But the, the point is to make it, is to make the mundane memorable. To find something that would be interesting, you know? I remember, um, like I've had people tell me I have stories for everything. It's true, I do. But, but so do you. You know, you just haven't told them yet. I remember one time I was living in Los Angeles, a friend of mine was talking to me, and she was saying, like, you, I don't know, the way you tell, the way you describe your life, it's like everywhere you go, you end up with something interesting happening to you. And I said, I do, actually. I do, and, then, and this is actually how. And so she said, so we were talking on the phone, so she said, so if we get together, we go do something, we'll have a great story. And I said, yeah, I suppose, maybe, maybe not. But the very fact that, and I was thinking in my head, the very fact that we're going to get together here, and this is like 11 o'clock at night, it's like at midnight, the very fact that we're going to leave home on a Tuesday night at midnight and go, go try to find an adventure, that tells me right off the bat that at least, at least that's interesting, if nothing else. So we went to, we ended up going to In-N-Out. And we're standing in line, and she's, and she's just annoying me about it. She's bugging me about it. She's like, nothing interesting's happened yet. I said, patience. Patience, 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 patience. And so we get up to the register, and there's a guy in front of us, and he pays, and the, and the girl says, okay, here's your change, and says, you're, you're number one. She hands him the little slip. And he goes, I'm number one? And he turns to the restaurant and goes, I'm number one! <laughs> so I started to clap, and then, and then the whole restaurant busts out into applause for this guy. And he's running around the restaurant giving high fives to people. <laughs> Even the, even the staff is all applauding. People at the grill turn around. They're whistling and they're clapping. He runs to the front. He's like, oh, my God. I uh, know. I mean, I, I don't know where to start. And where's number 99? Where are you, man? There's a guy at the back. He's like, I'm right here. He's all, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. <laughs> <laughs> he turns to me and my friend. He goes, you're number two. But you know what? Maybe tomorrow you'll be number one. You've got you to keep on with your dreams. <laughs> so, uh, so I look over and I go. <laughs> Just wait to do out. Yeah. And what's funny is I wonder, if I hadn't started applauding for the guy, most of that probably never would have happened. He probably would have just been like, I'm number one, and, you know, funny story there, but man, he, he ends up giving an acceptance speech at the end of all of that. <laughs> it's, it's finding something interesting, even in the mundane. You're driving down the street, and if you think about it, you, when you're driving to, to, to school, you're probably next to the same people every day, because you're driving the same way every day, and probably so is everybody else. Everybody's going to school, everybody's going to work, everyone's going to wherever they're going, probably around that same hour, unless there's a car that stands out to you, like a, like a lime green Mustang or something like that, you probably won't even realize it's the same people because nothing about the cars stands out. But if you can find something during that drive to stand out, again, maybe you won't make it into one of the most memorable things of your life. Maybe, you know, in and out, won't become you know, an acceptance speech. But at least you elevate these things just a little bit because most of your life is the mundane. So the way that you make your life more interesting and more exciting is you make the mundane more interesting and more exciting. You know? I'm thinking back to some of the best memories I've had in the past few years. Um, yeah, going and getting cake <laughs> you know, at the market. You know, just sitting there going, like, I want cake. 
You want cake? I want cake. So get up and go get cake. <laughs> yeah. And so that's when people say like, oh, when you when you when you become an adult, it's terrible. No, it's not. Go get cake. Yeah, it's like, fucking it's great. Awesome. Go get cake if you want cake. You can sit there and be like, I want fries. And then you can go get fries. You become, life becomes, life becomes too mundane when you sit there and you're like, I want cake. You want cake? I want cake. <laughs> oh, but it's late. Oh, but it's cold outside. Never mind. Yeah, it's too many calories. Never mind. Let's just go to sleep. <laughs> that's when you, that's when the mundane is now dragging you down because you missed an opportunity for excellence in life. You missed an opportunity for something exciting or interesting. Was anything exciting or interesting going to happen to you at Food for Less? I don't know. Neither do you now. Neither do you now. Was anything exciting or interesting going to happen at In-N-Out? I didn't know, but it did. Because you're in the right place at the right time. So yeah, cherish these things. Not a party and your first car in Disneyland, and grad night, and riding a bike in Paris, or, or whatever it is, whatever it is, you know? But that's that day-to-day -day shallowness that he's talking about. This, this relieves you from the shallowness of life. This is what relieves you. This is the antidote to the shallowness of life. The monotony that leaves you wondering years later where all the time went. Here's the bitchin' part, man. Yeah, I said bitchin'. Here's the bitchin' part. You can look, I'm bringing it back, man. You get to the end of it all, and you go, where did all the time Oh, that's right. Food for less. In and out. <laughs> yeah, driving down the street to noticing a tree that wasn't there before. All of these things right here. Now you know where all the time went. I just sang in the class. What's that? We just sang together. Yeah, we just, exactly. Just sang together. The fact that people know sang together. Yeah, and the fact that you all know this song, man. What y'all know about that? Yeah. The fact that you all know that song is connects us in some way, you know? Connects us across generations even that way. And that's a pretty cool thing, man. And what sucks is I think back to that, that group of people who were with me that backstage. Like I guess there's about a dozen of us. I think there were only like two or three of us who are still there at the gym together. Because that also happens in life. Everybody gets busy with life. They have to go, they do go do other things and you know, life happens and so everyone kind of goes their separate ways. And now there's just a couple of us there. And I, if I reminded one of them, remember like three years ago we did that thing? They're like, oh, yeah, that's right, you know? But the rest of us are scattered around. But I still got that. Even if I don't have the people, I still got that memory. And it relieved me of the monotony of, all, of, that, of that day at least. I don't remember if the demonstration went well. I don't remember what all happened or if anybody was paying attention. I have no idea. But I remember Santeria. Hopefully if you don't have anything else from this class, you'll have Santeria. <laughs> and a journal entry to remind you about it all. So, questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques? <laughs>